Hello fellow readers, welcome to my YouTube channel where the star is the book and today's star is one of the funniest and wittiest books you'll ever read I'm talking of a fraction of the whole by the Australian author Steve Toltz the book was written in 2008 so what is this book about? it's about the power of family, the power of love even in the most dysfunctional family. And believe me, in this family, the dysfunctionality becomes an art form in itself. It starts off with a character named Jasper Dean. Jasper Dean tells the story of his family of oddballs, oddballs with strange superpowers. Jasper's father is one of the funniest characters you'll ever meet in literary fiction which is named uh, Martin Dean. Martin is clinically depressed, he, has, he is very intelligent, he has a bleak view of mankind and he keeps uh, trying to teach uh, Jasper about fundamental views that you need to have to confront this uh, uh, mad season in hell which is life. Martin also has a brother which is a celebrity in itself. Uh, his brother is Terry Dean. Terry becomes a folk hero in uh, Australian society uh, due to the fact that he once went on a shooting spree. Uh, shooting and killing several sportsmen were known for cheating. Um, so the basis of the book is that Martin allows for something to happen that dramatically changes and defines the life of uh, Terry Dean and he talks about the book talks about that on page uh, 94 but in a sort of cosmic twist of events of karmic revenge then the life of Martin is shaped by the constant shadow of Terry Dean Listen to this on page 94 about the event that, um, in a sense, created the character of Terry Dean. Betrayal wears a lot of different hats. You don't have to make a show of it like Brutus did. You don't have to leave anything visible jutting from the base of your breast, best friend's spine. And afterward, you can stand there straining your ears for hours, but you won't hear a cock crow either. No, the most insidious betrayals are done merely by leaving the life jacket hanging in your closet while you lie to yourself that it's probably not the drowning man's size. That's how we slide. And while we slide, we blame the world's problems on colonialism, imperialism, capitalism, corporatism, stupid white men, and America. But there's no need to make a brand name of blame. Individual self-interest that's the sort of our descent and it doesn't start in the boardrooms or the war rooms either it starts in the home the book is about all things in general and nothing in particular there's not, there's not a single building block of society uh, that she, he is left untouched by the book there's all sorts of things ranging from childhood kindness uh, advice, solitude, philosophy, prejudice, crime. I'll just leave you with a few quotes. One of the uh, uh, funniest quotes I found about certain topics. So, listen to this on about childhood on page 14. Believe me, this is Lord of the Flies materi material right here. It's indescrib indescribable the joy children get from watching a fight. It's a blinding Christmas orgasm for a child. And this is human nature undiluted by age and experience. This is mankind fresh out of the box. Whoever says it's life that makes monsters out of people should check out the raw nature of children. A lot of pups who haven't yet had their dose of failure, regret, disappointment and betrayal, but still behave like savage dogs. I have nothing against children, I just wouldn't trust one not to giggle if I accidentally stepped on a landmine. About sporadic kindness, listen to this on page 21. This is a pinpoint accusation of one of the many flaws of mankind. When people think your days are numbered, they're really very nice to you. It's only when you are trying to get on in the world that they bring their claws out. 
There's a, a very intelligent quote I found about prejudice. Listen to this on page 99. They didn't believe that a man with so much money could have human qualities worth sympathizing with. He was up against the smelliest pre prejudice in existence, wealth haters. At least the racist, the man who hates black people, for instance, at least he isn't harboring a secret desire to be black. His prejudice, while ugly and stupid, is at least thorough and honest. Hatred of the well-off from those who would jump at the chance to swap places is a textbook case of sour grapes. There's also a very fun, funny part about uh, crime. Uh, in the early stages of their life, Martin and Dean uh, seek uh, spiritual counseling and material counseling from a criminal by the name of Harry West, who then recruits Martin helped publish a handbook of crime. Yes, you've heard it. A textbook manual for criminals of all sorts. Listen to what Harry West has to say about mugging on page 120. Mugging. Be prepared. Despite what common sense tells us, people will risk their lives to chase after the two dollars in their wallets or handbags. And if the mugging takes place in broad daylight, they are especially incensed. The audacity of a criminal to steal while the sun is high in the sky is so irritating to them, they will run at you like an action hero, even if you are holding a knife or a gun. Also, it seems the hassle of cancelling a credit card and the thought of applying for a new driver's license are so unbearable to the majority of the general public they are more than willing to die to avoid it. In their minds, a slow agonizing death by knife wound is infinitely preferable to dealing with the bureaucracy of the motor registry. That's why you need to be as fit as a long distance runner. Re really, who thinks whoever thought of writing a book on how to commit crimes um, well as you can imagine uh, with a very bleak view of mankind Martin Dean isn't exactly the type of person who would jump at the thought of being a father this is what he has to say when he finds out that he's being the father to Jasper Dean to have a child is to be impaled daily on the spike of responsibility. Really. Uh, uh, there's all sorts of funny quotes, of funny thoughts about uh, work, uh, education, patriotism, free will. I'll just leave you with what I thought are, are some of the funniest. This is what uh, the book says about work ethic on page 337. The worst thing you can say about someone in a society like ours is that they can't hold down a child. It conjures images of unshaven losers with weak grapes watching sadly as the jobs slip away and float away. There's nothing we respect more than work and there's nothing we denigrate more than the unwillingness to work. And if someone wants to dedicate himself to painting or writing poetry, he'd better be holding down a job at a hamburger restaurant if he knows what's good for him. This reflects the thought of many people. Um, there's also a very interesting and funny part about uh, biographies. So Martin Dean starts writing his life uh, uh, biography and this is what he has to say about that on page 382 like it or not I am a celebrity and that means that you are interested in how many sheets of toilet paper I use to wipe my arse whereas I have no interest in whether you wipe your arse at all or just leave it as it is you know how the relationship works let's not pretend it's any different all celebrities who write their biographies play the same trick on readers. They tell you some terrible degrading truth about themselves, putting you in a position where you think they must be honest chaps, then they turn on the lies. <laughs> There's even 
a wonderful part about a political program that Martin Dean presents to the world when uh, trying to apply for a public office. This is his political prog program, which uh, quickly turns into another accusation of mankind. Isn't it funny how sometimes you seem that, that a character has a direct access to all of your thoughts and all of your judgments, believe me, it's amazing. Listen to this. The world is getting hotter. The ice caps are melting because man keeps saying to nature, Hey, our whole idea of, of, of a cozy future is to have jobs. That's all we've got planned. What's more, we will pursue the same at any cost, even paradoxically, if it means the eventual destruction of our workplace. Man say, sacrifice industry and economy and jobs? For what? Future generations? I don't even know those guys. And further on, listen to this sentence. The reason we've never had visitors from outer space isn't that they don't exist, but they don't want to know us. We're the village idiots of all the teeming galaxies. And also on page 417, Martin accuses mankind again. When democracy works, the government does what the people want. The problem is what, with that is that the people want shitty things. People are scared and greedy and self-centered and only concerned about their financial security. Yes, the truth of the matter is that there has yet to be a great democratic nation because there has yet to be a great bunch of people. And that's the bottom line. <laughs> Martin... For, for uh, later on in the book, even devises a, a plan, a na he creates a national lottery to enrich uh, most uh, of the nation. I won't tell you how that story ends, I'll just leave you with this phrase on page 431. The whole country was in a whirlwind of hate, a hatred so intense and all-encompassing you couldn't imagine any of them were still able to kiss their loved ones at night. You wonder how they ever sneaked the abolishment of the death penalty past the mob like that. So, to sum up, please, please read this book. Uh, it should be mandatory reading for all people, especially if you still harbor within you as inner cynical teenager who would wish he could shake all of the found all of the building blocks of society. So if you are uh, a misanthrope, if you are depressed, if you have a very bleak view of mankind, you need to further enhance uh, your viewpoints by listening to the ramblings of the Dark Messiah, Mr. Martin Dean. Who's to say that you cannot find hope and psychological assurance from in bleakness and pessimism? If there was ever a cosmic court of mankind, I just wish Mr. Martin Dean would represent the district attorney. So, to sum up, this is a great book. I hope you guys enjoy the content. If you do, please subscribe to the channel and smash that like button on YouTube. See you again in a further review, I hope. Until then, I wish you all of the best and please read. Reading is like a transmigration of souls while you're still living. See ya!